Hello everyone, my name is Kristen Backegaard. I work at Sanford University in the Department of Biological Environmental Sciences, and I'm excited to share with you as part of the Friends of Shades Creek Salamander Festival to talk to you and show you some photos and some movies about one of my favorite animals and one that I've been fortunate to uh, do research on since uh, off and on since the late 1990s, and that is the fabulous Red Hill Salamander that is found only in Alabama. So the discovery of this incredible salamander was completely by accident. A man named Leslie Hubrick, who was a naturalist that studied snails, terrestrial snails here in the eastern United States, uh, was out looking for snails and went through a bunch of leaf litter and found this salamander by accident. And he only collected one, but he knew he had something different. So the red hill salamander is an extraordinary animal. It lives in these burrows that it rarely ever leaves. It's large. It grows to almost 11 inches long, making it one of the largest fully terrestrial salamanders here in the United States. It's cylinder shaped. It's got these little tiny legs, chocolate brown color, and it eats invertebrates that pass by its burrow entrance. So it'll come out at night, sit right in its burrow with its head pointing out, wait for something to crawl by, uh, then it will grab it for dinner. So in 1976, the Red Hill Salamander was federally listed as a threatened species, which is only one step above endangered, and in part because it has a very limited natural range. It's found only in six counties of Alabama. And as far as we know, it's only ever lived in these six counties in uh, very south central Alabama. A lot of its habitat is on private lands. And logging, this is an area of Alabama where there's a, a lot of logging, but logging and habitat destruction is really the greatest threat to this salamander. It needs north-facing slopes with plenty of trees. Uh, but fortunately, we now have more acreage than we used to. Uh, now on public lands, protected through Alabama's Forever Wild program. This is a beautiful photograph of some very lovely Red Hill salamander habitat in Monroe County. To the left, you can see the very steep slope, and we have this very lovely hardwood overstory, which is required by these salamanders. But it's in these steep slopes is where you find the salamanders. So in 2000, the Red Hill Salamander was designated the state amphibian. And this was an effort initiated by a third grade class down at Fairhope Elementary. Uh, and I actually got to meet these students and they were very excited about our amazing salamander. Here's a map and one of the unique things about this salamander again is it's only found in this, these six counties down in very south central Alabama. So the stars and the dark markings uh, indicate localities where salamanders have been located and they're associated with only a couple very specific geologic formations. So they're really very unique animals. Again, another picture of their habitat here on the left, hardwood overstory, steep slopes. Uh, here's in the upper right is a red hill salamander where they just like to uh, stick their heads out of their burrow entrances and normally they just stay, keep the rest of their bodies in the burrows where they're well protected by any possible predators. And when you're looking in Red Hill Salamander burrows, sometimes you find other things as well. So this middle photo shows a two-line salamander that seems to be taking shelter. And also at many of our Red Hill sites, also see this really, really neat trapdoor spider. So Red Hill salamander burrows are very deep. The best we can tell is that they go several feet uh, into the earth and they seem to have branches. But what we don't know is whether these branches are connected to other Red Hill salamander burrows or each salamander has its own individual burrow system. Um, for an animal that lives mostly underground, these sorts of things are very, very difficult to study. Uh, but back in about 2000, uh, we made a lead cast by putting molten lead 
down into a salamander burrow after we'd removed the salamander. It was being translocated uh, for some other reasons. So no salamanders were harmed in this process. Uh, but the photo on the right gives you some idea and it's about two feet high. So, and it's also very heavy. And so these burrow systems are very complex and we really have a very poor understanding of how salamanders use their burrows and how much branching and whether or not these burrows are interconnected or not. We suspect that they are, uh, but again, it's one of these things that's very, very difficult to study. Red hill salamanders are probably long lived animals that are fairly well protected down into their burrows and except for actually being dug up by something, we really don't know what uh, preys upon them. But the Cincinnati Zoo has had a red hill salamander that was wild caught as an adult in 1978 and it is still alive today. And this is a photo of their red hill salamander from a few years ago. But at a minimum, this animal is 43 years old. And that's just incredible. Red hill salamanders use a mode of reproduction that we call direct development. So the female lays a series of eggs that hang from a stalk uh, down in her burrow system. And these uh, baby salamanders essentially go through their larval stage while they are still in the egg. And once they hatch out of the egg, they completely have reabsorbed these gills and are a fully terrestrial salamander. So this is one of our amphibians that does not require uh, a stream or a pond in order to reproduce. As part of my research into red hill salamanders, I videotaped them performing red hill salamander behavior uh, at their burrow entrances using cameras equipped with uh, infrared light. So I'm going to show you a series of videos with some really interesting behaviors that I was able to record. So red hill salamanders yawn. Not sure why. I don't know. They sit out all night long at their burrow entrances. They'll come to their burrow entrance uh, roughly around nightfall and then they stay out all night until the sun rises the next morning. But at the end of this arrow, you will see a red hill salamander. You can see its eyes glowing. It's reflecting the infrared uh, light back. It's pitch, pitch dark out there, but the salamanders don't seem to detect the infrared light at all or be disturbed by it. So watch this salamander yawn. Not only do red hill salamanders yawn, sometimes they stick their tongues out while doing it. Here's a great close up video of a red hill salamander catching its dinner. And this is a behavior that I need to do further research on is that I have several recordings of these red hill salamanders eating toxic millipedes. Now these millipedes, some of them produce cyanide gas, some of them produce a chemical ball called benzaldehyde. Uh, and both of those chemicals serve as a chemical protection for our millipede. And red hill salamanders are eating them and do not seem to be suffering any ill effects, except they just stay in their burrows for a little bit longer than usual.
So this final bit of footage seems to show that red hill salamanders are not particularly sociable. Here's a, in the middle is a red hill salamander that is partially protruding from its burrow. And if you watch down in the lower left, you will see another salamander walking along the slope. And this slope is very steep. It's, it's almost at a 90 degree angle. And our, these salamanders just have little tiny legs. Uh, but this resident salamander that we see in the middle of the screen is clearly unhappy that it is going to get a visitor. So did you see it headbutt the intruder away? So I hope you enjoyed this quick introduction to the Red Hill Salamander. It's a fabulous animal. It's an amazing animal. And I hope you enjoyed the Friends of Shades Creek Salamander Festival.